Konnichiwa and welcome back to another collector's edition. The show where I'm trying to collect every single PAL Sega Mega Drive and maybe even the world. My name's Mike and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. My favourite time of the week, going through all these Sega Mega Drive games that I've purchased for the month. We've hit some huge milestones this month, the biggest being I am now 100, or actually under 100 games, for a full UK collection. And we're not too far behind on the PAL collection either. It's been a great month for collecting. I've picked up some amazing deals. Games that cost hundreds on eBay for half the price from private sellers. And some really good games have been added to the collection. Only one sports game, I think. Three if you count two driving games. Anyway, let's check out this month's Collector's Edition. First up, we've got Sword of Soden, and adding this to the collection means that I've only got one or two AEA games to get before I have the full EA collection, and then another two on top of that, two variants to have the full PAL collection. Those two variants are both FIFA 98 variants. First thing you notice about this game is that it's a Gen 1 box, and there are six games that came in this. I got another two to get. I actually have them in the collection, but in the new styled EA boxes. Uh, the two that I'm missing in this Kind of Gen 1 style is the Madden game and also I think it's either Blockout or Marble Madness. This I'm really happy with this. The quality of this box is absolutely amazing and if you've collected any kind of Gen 1 boxes in the past you'll know that they're super super brittle. Corners, all of this is usually broken but this is in great condition. Manual's in great condition. Box is in great condition and so is the game. The game itself, I haven't played it too much, a good hour or so and it's a, a very, very standard early 90s, nice graphics, but pretty simple gameplay, hack and slash. It's a little bit sluggish actually, a little bit slow, not much depth to it at all. I, I might play through and finish it, I'm not sure. It's uh, a little bit painful with its game's design. Fantasy Star 2, I love the Fantasy Star series, one of my all time favorite JRPGs. Two is my least favorite. Now I've recently released a video about sequels that are better than the originals, and I said three was better than two. Few people disagreed with me, but me personally, I much prefer three over two. Just a little bit too simplistic, didn't really move it on for me. I can understand why a lot of fans like it, because it's similar to, to one, but I wanted something more from a, from a sequel. Um, anyway, not a terrible game though, I still enjoyed it. This one is in great condition. It's got this horizontal manual here as well. What I am looking for though is the little guidebook that you've got. I think the US version and the PAL version both had exactly the same book. They pop up on eBay now and then, usually in horrible condition. If I can find one that's in half decent condition, I'll buy that and add it to this. Power Drive. Now, I've read and watched a lot on Power Drive and people say this game is amazing, and it is. It's an excellent driving game, excellent driving game. The physics, the mechanics of the game, the track design, all of it really, really well designed. I had a lot of fun, still have a lot of fun with Power Drive. I'm really glad I picked this up, actually. I didn't think it would be anything special, but uh, turns out to be an absolutely banger of a game. Super Skid Marks, kind of in the same vein as Power Drive, just not as good. The physics in this are the biggest letdown, and I think with all these driving kind of mini games, if you get the physics wrong, then, then it's an absolute nightmare of a design for a game. But yes, the physics aren't great in this game, but the box is in great condition. It's also got a J-Cart as well. That means we've got four players. I don't think the US got the J-Cart version of this. In fact, I don't know if the US got any J-Carts, but, uh, Great, great little invention this, being able to do four player. Pity the game wasn't wasn't power drive level of gameplay, but still not a bad little racer there. Spiru, this is a European game, French to be specific, from Infograms. This is in absolutely stunning condition, absolutely stunning condition. 
I haven't played this much. In fact, only played through the first level. It's kind of like a, a, a puzzle platformer, but this one comes with a manual. It also comes with this awesome poster. So here's the uh, poster you get with it as well. And it's really nice to get these little knickknacks that came along with the uh, game originally. A lot of these get lost as people used to just throw them out and then over time they've got lost or damaged as well. So again, <laughs> I don't know too much about it. I having only played the first level, I don't know if it's going to be a great game or not. Definitely visually a stunning looking game. Rain Grzecki's NHLPA All Stars Hockey. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a good enough ice hockey game, I guess. This one's in excellent condition. Nice to add it to the collection. I probably won't play this much at all. The uh, EA ones were just too good to, to kind of warrant having another game in the collection. But I do, because I'm collecting a full Sega Mega Drive collection. Cheeky Cheeky Boys! Always been interested in this game just because of the name of the title. Turns out that the game is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Got this in fantastic condition as well. Got it from a private seller. Really, really happy with it. But gameplay wise is where I'm most surprised. Really nice big sprites. Nice classic platforming action, 90s platforming action in there. Some really solid mechanics. I've had a huge amount of fun, huge amount of fun with Cheeky Cheeky Boys. Can't wait to finish this game. Mystic Defender, love the box art. Shame about the game. Now the game isn't bad, it's just it's very, very early 90s gameplay. Very simple gameplay in it. Graphics are nice for an early 90s game. Like I say though, gameplay is very, very, very simple. But a cool game. I've always wanted it in the collection just because of the box art. I had no idea what the game was about. I didn't own it or play it back in the day. I was kind of hoping the gameplay would be good. It's, it's a solid six out of 10 game. Next up, Captain Planet. Another game I really wanted to add to the collection. I don't know why. I think because I watched Captain Planet when I was a kid and thought the game must be great. Awesome cover art, classic Captain Planet. It's not super great. Um, it's pretty bog standard, pretty generic. Visuals aren't great. Gameplay's not really deep. I was kind of, I played it, I think maybe through to the third character, but wasn't, wasn't overwhelmed by it at all. Still, really nice to have it in the collection. Robocop versus Terminator. Never had it as a kid. Only, only just got it, but I have played it loads before. Stunning, stunning game. Absolutely brilliant. It's one of those games that a lot of people cite as being better on the Sega Mega Drive than on the Super Nintendo. I can definitely concur with that, especially all with the blood and the authenticity of the brand here. Top game for the Sega Mega Drive there. Super Fantasy Zone starring Opa Opa. Now this was originally one of Sega's mascots that had six in total, or five with uh, a potential six. Really nice shmup. Uh, back in the day, they called this a cutem up That's the marketing people called it a cutem up uh, but it is a shmup. The, the game design is excellent in it. This is an arcade port, not a direct arcade port, but this was out in the arcades first. This box is a little bit damaged at the top here, which I'm not too happy about because that was not how it was shown to me when I bought it from the person I bought it from. But I did get it super cheap. So I think a, a little bit of repair on the box here, and I think I can get that looking a little bit better. But still, cool to have that in the collection. We've got a big hitter, it's Body Count. Body Count is a light gun game. You can play this with the Menacer. It's not a great game for a, for a light gun game. It is very colorful, graphics are really nice. Sprites are huge on it. It's super simple. I managed to finish it in my first playthrough. I wouldn't say it's the best light gun out there. Again, another kind of solid six, maybe seven out of 10 game. It is an expensive game though. And I managed to get this for well under what people are asking for on eBay, like half the price. And it wasn't because someone was doing me a deal. It was because that's what the game is worth. But uh, love the cover art on this game. Absolutely stunning. It's worth just having in the collection for that alone. Another big hitter, and again, another piece, a game with great artwork, but this time, a game that I really enjoy. Now, this is a, a top-down shooter. It, it would fall into the kind of twin stick shooters if the Sega Mega Drive had a second stick to do the twin shooting with, but uh, as it is, we'll call it a top-down shooter. I'm pretty sure, now, Skeleton Crew wasn't a comic book, 
but it must have been drawn, all of this must have been drawn by a comic book artist because it just reeks of uh, comic book superheroes. Game is fantastic. The quality of this game is brilliant. Really, really enjoyed it. But again, another expensive game. And again, another game I didn't get for half the price it is on eBay, but I got it for significantly less. Private seller just selling me it for what it's worth. Uh, what the kind of real going rate is. So really happy to add that to the collection. Warlock. I had no idea what Warlock was. I've seen it around since it came out. It's always been like on a shelf or I've seen others talking about it or I've seen pictures of the box. I am genuinely stunned with how good Warlock is. It is visually great, mechanically great and gameplay is just brilliant. It's a little hard in places Definitely a little hard in places. It's like a, a side-scrolling action game. But wow, I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, really, really enjoy this. I don't know if I'm going to have the patience to complete it because it is it, there, there's some spikes in difficulty, especially when you get to end-of-level bosses. But I've really enjoyed my time with it. Toe Jam and Earl. There was a time that Toe Jam and Earl was selling for something like 150 to 200 pounds. It was considered like end of 90s, early 2000, as the Mega Drive game that you had to have. Like people used to say, this is the rarest Mega Drive game that you could get. Uh, and part of that myth around it, that the legendary myth of why this game was so expensive, spawned an actual sequel, I think, on the 360. No, actually, the sequel was on the Mega Drive. The series was continued again, I think, on the 360. Uh, I've got a really, really nice condition box. Uh, manual and cartridge, but I don't really enjoy Toe Jam and Earl. It's all right. I don't hate it. Um, I much prefer its sequel, Funkatron. I think that's a way better game, more traditional platformer. Just really just didn't gel with the format. Did try play it again. I still found it relatively boring to play, but I know there's some big, big fans out there of Toe Jam and Earl. And last, we have Rambo 3, another film uh, licensed tie-in. Again, this game, if the Mega Drive did have a second stick or an, a second D-pad on there, could theoretically qualify as a twin stick shooter. But again, we'll call it a top-down top -down shooter. There's some really nice depth to this game. Now, the version I've got is in great condition. There's a little bit of dog ending on the manual here. Um, it being in the sleeve here, that will that will flatten that out, but we'll, we'll end up with some creases. I might swap out the manual in the future, but otherwise in really, really good condition. And I've really enjoyed playing it. You know, it's not a, a, a gangbuster game by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a solid, fun little game uh, to play around with. some great games this month added to the collection and quite a few of those I can't wait to play all the way through. Now we may have to skip next month's collector's edition and maybe the month after that as well. There's some tough times in the world at the moment and I have to keep the pennies together so I can't spend it on too much 90s plastic. But don't worry, next Monday we're going to have another Retro Gamer Boy show with hopefully a really, really cool project for the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. Now, if you've enjoyed this show, if you love your Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, if you love retro gaming, then why not consider subscribing? You can do that by clicking on a little button just below this video. And remember, we put out brand new shows every single Monday, and so that you never miss one, also click that little bell just below the video. Now, if you can't wait until Monday, if you need to get your retro gaming fix, then you can click on two videos over here.